Hi, Alex here from Sonic Reaction Studios. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. Many thanks. Today I'm going to show you how to get general MIDI files out of Studio One. You'll find general MIDI files are the best way of ensuring that your sequences will play on the widest variety of synths and MIDI players, which is essential if you want to share them with others. I'm using the spacebar on my keyboard to start and stop play. I'll display other keyboard shortcuts as I use them. Studio One's a great DAW for creating sequences. You can export your Studio One sequence as a MIDI file, but it's not to the general MIDI standard, so you can't just play it back on any MIDI player. We're going to fix that using Sakaijo, which is a free portable MIDI editor running on Windows. Here I've opened Studio One and created the sequence. It's a cover of You Needed Me by Anne Murray. You'll see we have the drums up here, bass next, then other instruments and the melody at the bottom. That's the way I like to organise my sequences. You'll notice they are all instrument tracks. Audio tracks can't be saved on MIDI. I've created the drums using Studio One's Pattern Editor. So we want to create a MIDI file from this sequence. Now Studio One won't export patterns as MIDI, so we'll need to convert our patterns on this drum track to normal parts. First, I'd like to duplicate the drums track, so I'll right click and choose Duplicate Track Complete and work on this track, so I'll rename the first track. OK, and this is the track that I'm going to convert. So I'll do Select All on Track, which is Control, Shift and A. Now I'll right click and Convert Pattern to Part. So now we have a sequence that's ready to save as a MIDI file. I'll do File, Save As and select MIDI File. I usually add a suffix so I know it's a raw output from Studio One. Now we can close Studio One. Right, I've opened up a couple of Explorer windows. This is the file I just created with Studio One. This is a standard MIDI file and I'll just double click to play it. That's playing fine. Let me try the Studio One MIDI file. It says it's playing, but there's no sound. That's what we have to fix. So I'm going to open up the Studio One MIDI file with Sakaijo, the free MIDI editor. There's some other videos about Sakaijo on my channel. So here's Sakaijo with my file from Studio One. You can see it's imported all the tracks and kept their names. I mentioned that Studio One won't export patterns and you can see that with the drums pattern track. It's exported data where I had parts, but where there were patterns, there's nothing. I'm just going to delete this track because I don't need it. Let me just play this file. You'll hear that there's no sound, although the green down here indicates that there is MIDI data going out. We just can't hear anything. So let's open up the event editor and take a look at the detailed MIDI data. Let's take a look at some non-channel data. So you can see that Studio One has exported the tempo and any tempo changes. It's exported the key signature and also all the markers. Now let's have a look at something else. There is one of these sequencer specific strings for each track. This is something that's been added by Studio One. We don't need it in our general MIDI file, so I'll just delete these. That's OK. What else have we got? Well, on the drums channel, we have some bank select data and volume set at zero. Let's set that to 100 and see if that makes a difference to the sound.
So now we've got volume, but you'll notice it's all piano. And that's because everything's on channel 1. And also, there's no program change, so it just defaults to whatever is already in the synth for channel 1. So let's have each track on its own channel. Drums on channel 10. Bass channel 2. Now let's set all our volumes to 100. Before we set our program numbers, I'm just going to go to setup and for my MIDI instrument definitions, I'm going to choose General MIDI Level 1. You'll see how that comes in useful in a minute. Here's the program change numbers for General MIDI as per the General MIDI specification. So if we know what instrument we want, we can just refer to this table. So I'll put some program numbers in. There's only one cello, so I'll put that one in. Bass I'll set to 33. But let's say I'm not sure which guitar to use. I should be able to right click and do search and select voice which uses the settings I've set up for MIDI instrument definitions. But I've found I need to start with something before I can use this. So I'll select program 27, which is my electric guitar. Now let me just listen to that guitar. Now if I right click and do search and select voice, it works. That's better. Volumes need adjusting. That's better. Now I want to set up pans, reverbs and choruses. I always pan the drums, bass and lead to the centre. Let's set our reverbs up. Now you'll notice that where I've done search and select voice, it's added bank select numbers for me. So I should really add these for the other instruments. And we'll listen again. Now I think the drums could do with a bit more volume. So we'll highlight the drum track. You can see the drums velocities are mostly at 50%. So let me go up to modify event velocity and we'll add 30% to that. You can see it's gone up, that's fine. Now let's listen again. OK, I'm happy with that. So now we'll do File, Save As, and we'll add a different suffix. This message comes up because I've changed the channel of all these instrument tracks here, which is what I want, so that's fine. Now we can close Sakaijo. 
And there's a file we've just saved. Let's try playing it. That's great. So now we've converted our Studio One instrument song into a general MIDI file, which can be played on any standard MIDI player. This is Alex from Sonic Reaction Studios, and I hope this video has been interesting and useful. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to my channel and providing feedback. Thanks for watching.